That's right. Here at Mowers and Blowers, we push them into the garage and they come out driving. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. Today, okay, today is the hottest day of the year. They're saying 95 to 98 degrees. Can't you just tell? You can just tell by looking that it's hotter than hell. You can just tell. Today, I'm gonna be installing a proper throttle cable because I did find a long one, okay? And then uh, I'm gonna try to fabricate a choke cable by trying to put two short ones together to make a long one. Yes, I could just go and buy one for like $9 on eBay, but what fun is that? Anybody can just go and buy it. The fun of it is to see if you can make one. Fabrication, make one for free. Especially since I have a lot of short cables. I could just make a long one. I'll try to make it work. Uh, put the double stack pulley on today, hoping that it'll fit and coincide with the drive and deck belts. Correct the reason why the valve guide pushed out in the first place, which is usually overheating of an engine. What causes overheating of an engine? Probably have a mouse nest inside here. It's covering up all the fins. So when the blower fan is blowing, the air is not affecting the cooling of the engine. Therefore, the engine builds up to a to an uh, excessive temperature that uh, that's not designed for it, and stuff just stops popping out. You know, and that was the reason for the valve guide moving outwards. So we're gonna have to remove the uh, cover, blow out whatever's in there. I'm expecting a mouse nest in here for sure, and then we'll put the hood back on. I guess go for a test drive because other than that the tractor has gone through 10 episodes of revitalization more like six of the episodes has been for three engine tries you know today is episode 12 i don't recall ever making 12 episodes of anything in the four years that i've been doing this i got this uh cable i found in the back it is long enough for at least the throttle. I still need a uh, choke. Let's remove the screws for this one, 3 8 to the short one. Awesome. Let's test out the throttle. Awesome. So uh, before, when I connected that rod, when I went 
high throttle, it was low. And when I went low, it was high. So I had it reversed. So basically what I did was, uh, instead of the wire coming out through here to be placed over there, I moved it to the other side and there has, there's a hole here to accommodate that clip. So I just basically moved the wire over here. So now the throttle is correct. When you're moving it upwards, it's high throttle. When you're moving it lowwards, it's low throttle. Let's El Testo it. I gotta choke it all the time. Choke. I'm totally stoked from this engine. This engine runs great, so smooth. While I'm here, I'm going to switch out this uh, gravity fed fuel filter for a fuel pump type fuel filter. What's the difference? Not much, but it's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and it just takes two seconds. Fuel flow, fuel flow is this way. It's a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. I'm surprised so much fuel was uh, coming out because it's not, the engine's not on, so the fuel pump's not working. It's just residual. I uh, tested this fuel filter. It's clean. Looks dirty on the outside, but the inside's clean. We're getting there. Now we gotta put the double stack pulley on. Fuel filter's done. Found a couple of bolts to affix the uh, cover back on there. So it's looking like a real engine now. Just need a choke cable now. And uh, to put the double stack pulley on the bottom. I hope I don't have any problems with that. And then put the hood on and I think we're done. Ooh. I do need to put the gas tank back on. Yeah, got to put the gas tank back on. It's pushing the limit there. Okay, I've got the double stack pulley on. And what I was worried about was that the drive pulley was going to be too low. But actually, now I'm matching it up. It is exactly lined up with the uh, tension and idler pulley. So it's going to work, I think. I'm gonna remove this uh, short choke cable because I need this top part here to be over at the dash. Then I'm gonna try to attach this part to a free flowing one here that doesn't have it, but it's so smooth, you know what I mean? And it's just, there's no tension on this thing. It's just a flap for the choke, you know? So there's no tension on it, which is good. So we'll take this one off and attach it to the dash. We'll take this one over here and attach it onto here and I'll find a way to attach it.
Z-bend through the hole. In here. Don't tighten this yet because you're going to have to adjust it. So I've got it attached, right? Very smooth. It doesn't take much at all to move it. There's a little round hole here that they used and they plugged it up. I'm gonna knock it out. There you go. See? A little hole. And then I wonder if you could stick this through here it fit uh, looks a little tight the hole is is too big because this is like for an MTD or something you know uh, you either have to make the hole bigger or trim around this area but then you have this these these tabs here that you need to keep it there you know so perhaps the hole needs to be bigger this is the biggest bit I have, half inch. Yeah. I've uh, spliced the two, pulled it with some wire to hold it, and I'm just going to uh, do a couple of pack welds on the wire. I want to hold this not too hot. This is tough. So it finally did work. You just you couldn't hold the tack too long, you know, just a tss, real quick, you know. So a couple of tacks on there. This wire is secured to that wire. You needed a couple of stoppers, you know. So I put a couple of self-tapping screws to hold this part in place, hold this part in place, and then when you do it now, pull. And there we go. We've got a choke cable that fits right into the dash. So now we got a throttle. We got a choke. That's all it takes. Some ingenuity. Just opened my mail and I got a package from a longtime subscriber, Doug Seaman. <laughs> it says, for removing carburetor fuel solenoids. Thin one inch or seven sixteenths um, wrench to get in between the carburetor bowl and the fuel solenoid. Very useful tool, because you know, you'd have to grind down some wrenches, but this is shaped the right size, see? Round and half inch. Thanks, Doug. That's right. You know, when you start to put the uh, hood on, you're almost done. I honestly, right now, can't think of anything else I need to do with it, other than take a test drive and connect the lights. Now, I wonder if this engine will even, this hood will even close with the engine on it, you know what I mean? Because it's a much bigger, wider engine. However, I have seen LT1000s and 2000s with uh, this engine on it, so, and with this hood combination, so I'm pretty sure it'll fit. At least I hope it will. Let's see. There we go. Now all we gotta do is start me up.
All right, here we go. We got a new choke cable now. Okay. belt slipped off the tensioner. I guess that was when I was putting on the double stack pulley. It came off. I just thought to myself that uh, it runs great, everything works, right? But what was the reason why the valve guide pushed out in the first place? It was the overheating of the engine, which means that the mouse nest is still in there, right? Let me extract whatever's underneath the cover to ensure that the blades are clean. You know what I mean? The fins inside that are above the, the two cylinders. Those need to be clean so that the isolation of the air from the blower fan cools the engine properly. So I, I need to do that before I go take a ride around the block. Of course, the hood must come off. And of course, I do have to choose the absolute hottest day to do this. I hope I don't have to take off too much. Oh, son of a gun. My, uh... My, uh... My choke cable. That's gonna be a problem. Uh-huh. You 
No, it's actually not bad. Not good, but it's not bad. It's right there. I need to cover this up and then get my blower out. There we go. Clean, bro. Now let's put that cover back on without breaking my uh, choke cable. Okay, there you go. Everything's back to together again. I think the front wheel is a little towed out. Not towed out, but I think the spindle over here is a little bent. That's for another time. Done ski with this project, man. All right, let's go.
I noticed that when I was riding it before, this thing was so shaky. So I took off this cover and this bolt is loose. Can you believe it? There we go. Easy, easy. So I'm thinking that I should do an old change because um, you saw in time-lapse, I made a um, deflector cover so that you at least don't put your foot into the blades and die. It, uh, it looks okay. <laughs> so I might do an old change now. I'm gonna try to not make a mess. So how about that, huh? 12 episodes, third engine. Finally, it drives out of the uh, garage, does a lap around the uh, block, and uh, without a hiccup. Engine's good. We uh, put on a makeshift deck grass deflector on the side. Did an oil change with 1.5 quarts of uh, Lucas Oil SAE 30 for the summer. Um, we did check that uh, it does charge the battery just fine, starts just fine. We fabricated a choke lever as well as a um, throttle cable. Uh, lights work, muffler shield, double stack pulley put in, um, fuel pump type fuel filter put on, uh, took off the cover and uh, blew out the rat's nest and crap that was covering the fin so now it should cool fine after we uh, welded on a muffler as well as uh, banged in the valve guide <laughs> and that was just for the third engine <laughs> we don't even want to talk about what happened with the first and second engine right i mean that was like the bulk of it you know if i just started with this engine it would have been just two episodes <laughs> or three or four or something like that anyway what do you guys think five seventy five Let's not go crazy. Let's not do 650 or 700s. Definitely not worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to do anything with the body because that the gray paint is very tough to define to match. If you spray it a little bit over here. It's going to it's going to be obvious. It's going to look too clean here and really dirty there. Uh, and, you know, I'm just you know the the tractors. It, it is what it is. I'm not going to spend uh, another two three episodes painting the thing. You know what I mean? I just want to get some money for it. Get rid of it. You know pretty much about the price of what I get for an engine, you know what I mean? Like if I sold this engine for two, three hundred dollars, I'd be totally stoked, you know? So if I got two or three hundred dollars for this whole tractor, it'd be fine. Yes, I did spend 12 episodes on it and a lot of effort, a lot of my time. But look, that's, that's part of the channel, you know what I mean? Uh, making videos of every little thing that you do to this tractor, sell it as is. Runs, drives, hydrostatic transmission, uh, 20 horsepower V-twin engine now. Starts, runs, mows, no problem. It's a working tractor. 
and I feel good about selling this because I don't have any cracks in the engine that a bully leaks. Did a fresh oil change on it and uh, tighten up some loose ends here and there, take the seat. A lot of work. We did a lot of work on this, but uh, I'm glad we're finally finished. Thanks a lot for joining me on this grueling 12 episode nightmare, but all in all, I try to stick to I never give up. I'm relentless. I don't care how long it takes. You just got to finish it. You know what I mean? But then I got another tractor back there. I'm going to take a little while before I get to that one because I don't have an engine for it. I might think about trying to repair that 20 horsepower Kohler Courage again with some JB Weld or some Quick Steel. I heard Quick Steel may work well for that. Uh, and then uh, Red Loctite all the threads on the valves so that it definitely won't move. We'll see what happens. Uh, stay tuned for that in the future, not right away. I'm gonna take a few days off and have a heart attack. <laughs> anyway, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Here at Mowers and Blowers, we push them into the garage, but they come out driving. Next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowersandblowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.